I didn't make history tonight. You did. It's been just over a week since Justin Trudeau painted most of this country red. He also became the first prime minister to make earning the title a family affair. His mother, Margaret Trudeau, joins us this morning in studio. And I was watching you watching that <laughs> clip and the smile on your face. I, of course, am the proudest mom in the country right now, I guess. Justin, but it's not just Justin, it's his whole team. And it's the whole idea of such change in our country. Very, I work in mental health uh, across the country. I know we need change. We just do. And so Justin was able to, to convince people to trust him and his team. And so I'm very proud. Did yeah. you want that change to come in the form of your son, given what you oh. know and all that you've experienced? <laughs> we, we raised our kids as so many have to be free to make their own choices and we pick them up if they fell but basically find your own path your own way uh, what from the moment Justin became a parliamentarian I knew where his star was heading so I, I, I I've always known his that he's been a leader and that his passion is huge for, for the country. He didn't always know. I mean, we've all seen those <laughs> clips where, where he said, you know, at a young age, he said, he said, I want to teach, which yeah, he did. Yeah. You know, I don't have an interest in politics. Yes. What changed along the way? Well, I think he found a huge, big classroom. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Uh, and he does teach. He does teach. He's a, as a leader, he's able to, he has a lot of uh, uh, experience in public life. He has a lot of experience from his father in what it is to be part of the globe, the world. World. So uh, he, I think he's he's in good place. That wasn't always a world that you were comfortable with, and you've been very open oh, no. about that. Yeah. But I want to go back to the picture, Margaret, that we just showed of you holding your son's oh. face on on election night. Were there words exchanged? I don't remember. It was so noisy. I just know. Yes, there was no. I don't suppose there were any words because we course talk with our eyes it, it, this was his moment this was what he'd worked so hard for and I knew that we the pride in the family I was just representing mm -hmm. a couple of days before the election uh, we had him in here in our studios with a studio audience and uh, Bev and I put some questions to him and uh, one of the questions that we put to him was about literary literary stars in this country and I, I, I said to him Margaret Lawrence <laughs> Margaret Atwood and without skipping a beat he said Margaret Trudeau oh, good and, yay. right away like well, a good son should yeah. but then after that there was this really heartfelt moment because he looked into our cameras and he said you know what everybody asks me about my dad people talk about my dad all the time and following in his footsteps he said but I want to take a minute to recognize my mom for you know the strong person that she is <laughs> and then he looked into this camera over here and said, I love you, Mom. I know. I saw that. I woke up to that one morning. Yay, Canada AM. I start with you each morning. So Thank many of us that. do. But that was pretty special for me. I, I, I love Josh. I love all my children. I, all that we want for our children is for them to be able to, to be the best they can be and follow their dreams and, and make their way. And so Justin had beyond expectations. And he's a team with Soph. So we've got a, a, quite a team you know, noticed a little bit that we didn't see you as front and center no. uh, during this during this election campaign. Do you think they might have made an attack at is he's just not ready, he needs his mom? Is <laughs> no. that what you were thinking? <laughs> I thought that. I, anyway, I did campaign. I did. I campaigned all across the country. I just went into liberal riding offices and encouraged the troops and spoke to them about mental health, really in the context of being positive, of being... Uh, uh, finding the best in people, looking for proactive ways of change rather than complaining and blaming. And that's mental health that I work on as an advocate all the time. So I, I took that opportunity uh, across the country and to meet his team too. I didn't get to meet all of them, of course. I just did a sampling because of time, but it was wonderful to be part of it. I also door knocked for Mark Garneau, because that was a big part of our win, was really meeting people. What was the reaction like when you knocked on a door and people saw you on the other side of it? Well, we were in a very liberal area, and it was all just patting each other on the back and yacking, and just saying how wonderful people inviting everything you in is. for coffee. Exactly. Yeah, come, no, come and stay a no, while. No. We were just looking at pictures of the family, of Sophie and the kids, uh, and of Justin. Is there such a thing? Because here you were, the wife of a prime minister, the mom of a prime minister. Is there such a thing as work-life balance? 
Oh yes, yes, Pierre had it down to an art, but it was before the day of telephones and computers and this immediate urgent access of everybody at all times. He was accessible during the day when his hours he was working, and he was ours at night, although he still had to work for two or three hours at night on his brown boxes. But uh, Justin is in a different world. It's immediate, it's urgent, everyone wants to be in touch, texting, everything. He's got to do the same. Sophie works very hard, as most wives do, I think, saying, put away that cell phone, uh, it's dinner or whatever. So yes, finding the balance and, and getting out in nature. We're a family that plays outside all the time and for it to have the time to re re regroup, to charge your batteries in nature is, is essential. He will, he will. Uh, you know, I want to ask you this question because you've been open and you've said about, you know, your mental health and of course you're an advocate mm -hmm. that quitting smoking marijuana contributed greatly uh, to your mental health recovery. Oh, did it? Y yes. Oh, did I say that? Yeah, you did say that. Yeah, do you still yes. stand by that? Oh, no. <laughs> yes, yes, of course I do, because I was very proactive about getting healthy, about being well. And that was And there was no question that w when, when you have a mental illness, our first reaction when you're not diagnosed and you're not, you haven't put yourself under the care and the treatment of somebody who knows how to fix you, we'll try and fix ourselves. So whether it's, it's uh, alcohol or, or drugs or you know, too much spending or any of the things that take us out of ourselves, a distraction that we will do to try and fix ourselves, to try to alter our own state. Because our mind is, is either overly sad and we haven't got interest and we're trying to spark it. Um, substance abuse and mental illness go together like this. So uh, appreciating that, recognizing the addiction and, and then dealing with what's underneath it so that you don't have to reach for artificial ways of, of having peace of mind of having joy and happiness. Which makes so much sense, yeah. but given all that you're saying, what do you make of Justin's plan to, to legalize Oh, pot? that's a whole different issue. It's the same, of, it's a control issue. It's an issue like alcohol. You you don't just completely stop drinking because, uh, I mean, alcohol is part of our, our culture. Everybody's, I don't drink, everybody's drinking all the time. Um, some people choose to not drink. They'd rather chill with, with marijuana as adults. It, it certainly isn't a therapy, and it's not for, for people, it's a, an adult choice that you make. It, it's just a way of regulating it, So because it's a, it's a reality. It's a huge reality. Children under the age of 18 should not smoke marijuana, and that is the truth. And we've got to have strong controls, so that, and education, so they understand that we're talking about their brain health, the most important thing. And until your brain is developed, uh, evidence shows after, after 18, it's, it doesn't impact your brain, but there is developmental damage done. So uh, it, I think it's important to address it and not hide it. Uh, and for me, and certainly for, for my mental health, what I had to learn not only was to seek help and to trust the medical community, but also the science of brain health that is real now that we're really knowing how the brain works and the way it works. And being compliant on medication and being compliant and making very good life choices every day. You're in a good place right now. You're in a good Aren't place. I just? Yeah. <laughs> Cannot even wipe that smile off your face. It's no. so good to see Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. All the Thank best you. to you. Thank you.